Well, let me tell you something, brother! Snort, 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 tell you. Drip, snort, snort. I got the drip, yo. So the only other thing to talk about this morning is a follow-up to yesterday's Xbox story. As you remember, there is a strong rumor, not confirmed by anyone, but a strong rumor that Xbox exclusive games are now going to be ported to other consoles, notably the PS5. And already the rumor had been that it was going to be Hi-Fi Rush, but now the rumor is, oh, it's going to be everything. It's going to be Starfield, it's going to be Halo, it's going to be Gears, it's going to be every game is going to be ported to other consoles, right? So, of course, immediately everyone starts freaking out. Oh my god, this is the end of Xbox. I want to make it very clear from the jump that I'm not in any sort of gaming circles where these kinds of talks happen. And what I mean by that is I don't talk to people who actually care about these things, who keep up with gaming news like that. I talk to people who play games and, you know, enjoy them when they do play them. But as far as keeping up with the day-to-day -day games journalism style news, I don't know anybody who does that anymore, man. So when he says things like, oh, everybody's saying that this is the end of Xbox, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. It's like when you see people on the news talking about some sort of protest or something that's going on and they make it sound like it's this huge thing and then you go there and it's like 30 people outside in a parking lot yes 30 people in a parking lot is definitely more than zero that there normally is but it's not this huge thing that everybody is talking about that needs to be just blasted across the internet it's obviously a big deal for the people who are in these circles and actually care about these things and if that's you cool dude i'm glad to hear that you have something that you enjoy to talk about but dsp sitting here being upset about something that he very clearly doesn't actually care care about i just don't understand why he would want to do that you know right this is seriously that's it there's nothing else that's ever going to be worth playing on xbox there's no reason to own an xbox yada yada if you want my take on that watch yesterday's podcast because i had a different take i feel like this is an over exaggeration literally no one has said there will not be xbox exclusives or at least timed exclusives Right. I love that he starts talking about the subject and then tells you that if you want to hear his full opinion on it to go watch yesterday's podcast. But he doesn't tell you that there's going to be a link in the description. He doesn't tell you that there's going to be a pop up that you can click on that'll take you right there for ease of access. And I'm almost certain that he didn't put a pop up in there regardless of whether or not he mentioned it, because that would require any modicum of forethought, which I know he is incapable of. But the entire time that he's going to be talking about these exclusivity deals with games on Xbox or rather lack thereof, he's not going to mention one time that there's other reasons why you might want to pick one console over the other that has nothing to do with the games that are on it. Maybe you just like the UI of one console over another. Maybe all of your friends are on one platform and you don't want to make the transition to the other one and abandon all of your online gaming friends. Maybe the games that you receive through the subscription service on that platform is just better than the other one and that's a reason you might want to stay. Maybe you're one of those people that only cares about the hardware of the console and just wants to pick whatever console is going to make the game look the best because it has the best hardware hardware. That's why this entire argument is stupid to me, and I'm addressing it all now because he's not going to. The only thing he's going to talk about is whether or not these games are going to be exclusives anymore. And if you ask me, that's like the least important thing when it comes to consoles. I've owned many different consoles throughout my life, and sometimes I didn't get to play exclusives that were on one console that I didn't have at the time. And you know what I did? I did absolutely nothing about it and just continued to play all of the games that I was already playing. Because it really doesn't matter. There's so many games to play, you can just pick any other one. But go ahead, DSP. Tell us about these exclusivity deals. Can you imagine if Halo, whatever it is, what would it be, 7, 8? Let's say Halo 10 came out, and it actually came out on PlayStation the same day as Xbox. Do you think that's going to happen? I don't think Microsoft spent all this money buying all these studios to then make games cross-platform. What was the point then? To sell the game to the widest audience possible and make a bunch of money? What are you talking about, DSP? I understand that you think that by making these games console exclusives that they're going to therefore sell more consoles and therefore more peripherals and more games. And that's where they actually make the money is not on the consoles, but on the peripherals, on the subscriptions and on the games. But I think at some point, the inverse has to be true. At some point, just selling more copies of the game is going to be more beneficial to your company, no? Creating good games that everybody loves and can play everywhere has a 
domino effect of creating a game series that you can sell to everybody everywhere, and it builds a legacy for that company. So let's not just sit here and act like they're completely stupid because they might be getting rid of their exclusivity when it comes to their games. There's definitely benefits to doing exactly that. I'm just saying, but that's my take. And a lot of people disagree. They think this is the end of Xbox. The sky is falling. I've even seen people <clears throat> start posting stuff up on the internet. This was the day when Xbox started its downward slope to death. And it's Don Matrick presenting the Xbox One. Remember that? Do you guys remember over 10 years ago when Don Matrick literally botched the launch of Xbox One? And looked like making himself look like a jackass and made everyone hate Microsoft for like a year? I remember that. And I remember he got shit canned. Yes, DSP, everybody remembers this because you won't let us forget every single time that Xbox or Microsoft is in the gaming news cycle, you seem to bring up this situation again and again. We get it. You hate Don Matrick. For some reason, you go out of your way to bring him up every single time. Yes, he's an absolute clown who made the console look terrible. Yes, he absolutely misrepresented what the console was going to be and tarnished the name that Xbox had built up to that point with the 360. But I think that the only reason that you brought up this very specific tweet is because you just love talking about Don Matrick. I'm sure there was hundreds if not thousands of other tweets in response to the Xbox thing. But you picked out this one specific tweet because you wanted to bring up Don Matrick again. It just seems strange and very tiring in all honesty. I know the guy is constantly on loop and always saying the same things. It's a vicious cycle with him. But sometimes when he goes on these loops and brings up the same topics time after time, you can't do anything but let out an exasperated sigh. Because what else is am I supposed to do? This is like the hundredth time I've heard this story. I don't know if it's a thing that comes with age or if it's purely because of DSP's personality, but it is so tiring. He got f basically fired. They said he left. No, he was forced out. And then he went to run Zynga, a mobile games company for a few years. He tanked that company too. And then he left the industry. <laughs> <clears throat> so, so, there you go. Um, anyway, the big announcement and follow-up this morning is Phil Spencer himself. Yes, that's right. The CEO of Xbox. <laughs> he came out and said, I'm hearing all this stuff that's being said online. Next week, we are going to do an official online event to explain what's going on. And he left it at that. He says it'll be about the future of Xbox. And that's it. Immediately, people say, well, that's obviously concrete evidence. We're all correct. He literally didn't say anything. He literally said, we will have an event next week to explain what's going on. He didn't say, yes, you're all right. He didn't say anything like that at all. What the... This just drives me nuts. Right? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> people spin anything to serve their own agendas. And you'd be the person to ask about that, wouldn't you, DSP? Because you're the king of that shit. And he's really sitting here being impressed about these weird no-name fake people on Twitter that nobody could ID. He's really hard stuck on the fact that random people on the internet think that they are right. Like, DSP, move on, bro. Get off of the internet. It's really not that deep. And you could say that that's ironic coming from me, but, like, DSP is one individual that I pick apart day after day. I know the guy at this point. DSP doesn't know these people. These are literally nobodies to him. Why does he care what Zach123 on Twitter Twitter is tweeting about. Just let Zach be wrong on the internet. He didn't say anything about it. He just says, I've heard everyone talking online. He's heard this buzz online and he basically wants to clear the air. So he's going to do a presentation next week to explain what's really going on. Is that not as clear as the day that he wants to dispel maybe some rumors and let everyone know the truth of the matter? Like, <clears throat> I just don't get it. What m fucking makes people think that confirmed what they were talking about? It doesn't at all. But you just did the exact same thing. You just said, isn't it clear as day that he might want to dispel the rumors and set things straight? You're going the exact opposite direction, DSP. You're no better than these people because it could be exactly what they're saying. It could be that he heard these rumors and wants to come out and officially announce it. It's all the same shit. You're actually no better. You're just as regarded as they are. You actually fell for the exact same trap they did. You just went the other direction with it. Way to go, idiot. Do you guys remember... Years and years ago, 
when there was a fabrication about somehow I was hiring an escort and flying them from Europe to my home to spend time with me, right? And I said, well, tomorrow I'm going to tell you all the truth about it on the podcast, right? Now, back then I didn't have a podcast, but I said, oh, I'll talk about it on the pre-stream tomorrow. And some people said, you see, tomorrow he's going to spill the beans and confirm it all. And the next day I said, it's all bullshit. It's all lies. Don't believe any of it. I don't know where it's coming from. Just ignore it, right? I'm so goddamn sick and tired of hearing about the goddamn escort, DSP. We get it. It's the one thing that the detractors tried to pin on you at some point that wasn't actually true. But you have more detractors to thank for dispelling the entire thing. You did nothing to prove that they were wrong other than deny it like you deny everything. So it obviously wasn't believable coming out of your mouth. This is the only win that you've received in your entire online content creation career and you've run with it since. It's just just obnoxious it's tired it's overdone dog talk about anything else please can you point to one other thing that you've been proven right about just once just the next time that you need to say that the detractors are wrong and stupid just point to something else <laughs> it's like your guys are out of your minds just because he's going to do an event to clarify what's going on with microsoft doesn't mean he's 100 percent confirming everything's all these conspiracies like what the fuck <clears throat> really, this is just insane. I don't know how these people fucking get this stuff. I just don't understand why people in the modern day want to believe the absolute craziest, zaniest, most drama-filled, worst-case scenario about everything. Really. Well, that's probably because fact is often stranger than fiction, DSP. You'd know that if you uh, knew anything about anything. But I don't understand what's crazy or zany or absolutely drama-filled insane about Xbox getting rid of some of their exclusivity. There's really nothing insane or radical about it at all. In all honesty, this entire news story to me is a waste of time and stupid. And you thought that same thing, but here you are talking about it. You're the guy that was sitting there saying that this is because it was a slow news day and people are just trying to farm clicks with clickbait. But yet here you are are taking the exact opposite stance and doing the exact same thing you're just the opposite side of the coin i expect the announcement's going to be here's my expectations and i could be wrong because this is my speculation they want to have exclusive games for a limited time so they're going to make games like blizzard activision you know that just got acquired uh bethesda um What's the name of the studio that just made the flop game Redfall, but they've made games like Dishonored and stuff in the past? I forgot their name. But they have like 10, 10 15 big studios. I assume the announcement's going to be, when we launch games, they're going to have a timed window on Xbox. So like, let's say six months, there'll be Xbox exclusives. So if you want to play them, you either got to have a PC or an Xbox. Then they're going to be ported to PS5 so that another audience can get a chance to play these games because that makes sense. They're going to get their installed base exclusivity window. So if you still own the console, you get that bonus. Maybe a lot of these games will still be under Game Pass, so you'll get them under Game Pass. You don't have to buy them. But if you own a PS5, you're not left in the cold. You'll be able to buy the game a few months later, right? <clears throat> That's my take. I think that would make the most sense. And I know I let him ramble on there for quite a while, but I don't think that that's the most regarded take I've ever heard, especially not from DSP. I love that he couldn't but help to mention Redfall, but couldn't be bothered to actually know which studio made the game so that he could make fun of them. But he knew that he wanted to make fun of them by saying that they had a game that was totally ass and flopped or whatever. So that's very robust. I appreciate that, DSP. But again, not the most regarded take I've ever heard. It kind of works. Seriously, I don't know where people are getting this idea, right? Xbox is now Sega. They're no longer going to make consoles. They're just going to make games and publish them everywhere. Who the fuck said anything like that? I know I just interrupted, but I noticed it right before he said the line, Xbox is now Sega or whatever, that Eternal Napalm, you know, his moderator, his dent in chat, long time dent actually, just typed that in the chat before he said it. I don't know if he was doing it ironically and DSP had addressed this exact claim before, but I do think it's absolutely hilarious not knowing whether or not he meant it ironically and that DSP could potentially be shitting on Eternal Napalm once again. It's definitely not out of the realm of possibility that DSP is just straight up shitting on eternal napalm once again i don't care what your industry insider is leaking there's no evidence of anything <laughs> it's wild what these people fucking come out with you know what i mean so <clears throat> that's what i'm thinking is going to happen i could be completely wrong from a business standpoint i think that makes the most sense of what they could do 
That way they don't lose the entire need for the Xbox console outside of the Game Pass value. And it's the best of both worlds because they will make additional sales when the games go cross-platform six months later. Essentially, their games will have two life cycles. The Xbox launch and then the worldwide release months later. They'll get two sales boosts. You see? Like I said, a totally fine opinion from DSP, not a regarded take at all. What it is regarded as how he's decided to talk about it. He's very aggressive. He's very smug when he talks about this, constantly going out of his way to act like he knows better than everybody and that everybody that has any other opinion is stupid. And that's one of the things that you can't really fix about DSP. You can never really justify that even when he's right, he's right for the wrong reasons or he's so smug when he does it that you just want him to be wrong. Like you were willing to change teams specifically to spite him. He's He's just that unlikable. It's kind of remarkable because not too many people that I meet have this feature where they can just make you want to switch teams to spite them. I don't see what the, you know what's wrong with that or why people would think otherwise. Why? Because people want to be toxic. People want to believe the worst. They want to see the downfall of Microsoft and Xbox because then they could talk, they go videos about it and streams about it and they could have pictures with fires burning. And do the dog sitting at the table, this is fine. And the Elmo going like this with the apocalyptic fire background. And they get, oh! And everyone gets all up fucking uppity about shit on the internet. And he's getting so worked up and upset about this. And I just don't understand what he's really accomplishing by doing that. He's raising his blood pressure and just exposing the fact that he's getting upset that people are having fun on the internet. That people are doing memes. That they're just, you know, having internet culture the way internet culture has existed for a long time. Like anytime anything happens on the internet, people are going to be using these memes to explain the situation. They're going to be using these memes and references to explain their thoughts on it. And some of these people probably don't even genuinely think that this is the end of xbox or whatever but they are using those memes to kind of catch your eye which you can say is clickbait and he probably would but again it's the internet man this is gonna happen there's no point in being upset about it like this and i'm tired of it because it's so fucking immature there's no evidence of anything anyone is saying they're doing it on purpose to stir up nonsensical drama so you'll watch their crap and it pisses me off all right now if next week <clears throat> the announcement is, yeah, we're not going to make Xboxes anymore. Everything's going to be full on, you know, cross-platform from now on. Then you know what? Fair enough. You want to go crazy. You want to go ham. You want to make the content with the fire and the apocalypse. Then at least it's warranted. But at least fucking wait for that to happen before you announce it. You in fucking ingenuous bastards yeah dsp ingenuous was not the word you were looking for you were looking for disingenuous actually like the exact opposite of what you said but i know that that's pretty typical for you you don't exactly have the best grasp on the english language or words that are exactly out of your typical vocabulary which is fine but if that's the case i would just recommend that you stick to words you know so you don't look foolish but please notice the prerequisites that he has artificially put on this situation in order for you to be able to use these style of titles and thumbnails that he's talking about with the fire and the apocalypse and all of that not only does xbox have to completely stop making xboxes which i don't think was going to happen to begin with but then they also have to say that they're no longer doing any sort of exclusivity on their games that they're just going to be all cross-platform from the jump both of those things have to happen before you can use a title and thumbnail that you want to use on your content at least to be justified by dsp which i understand at the end of the day who really gives a shit whether or not dsp thinks that you're being disinterested ingenuous or not also i seen eternal napalm put in the chat the downfall of xbox and like all capital letters while dsp was talking so now i'm convinced that it was ironic and that he didn't actually think that beforehand about xbox becoming like sega so i'm let down and disappointed in you eternal napalm this is going to go on your performance review next quarter really these people just are so out for clickbait <clears throat> they want you to believe the worst so that way they benefit it pisses me off okay well, that's my take, and I guess I clicked the wrong thing. That's my take, and I guess we'll see next week what actually happens when Phil Spencer steps up to the plate, per se, and announces exactly what's going on, all right? It's always a telltale sign to me exactly how angry DSP is when it comes to a subject on whether or not he accidentally clicks on changing the scene in his OBS. Because a lot of these segments where he gets his angriest, he does the face zoom in that's super cringe or it's during a DSP news or a DSP day off or something, which means that he has to change the scene to the normal style. And it seems like whenever he gets really angry during these segments, he always clicks on the wrong thing. It just always makes me laugh to see this older style individual get so upset 
upset and angry that he gets flustered and clicks on the wrong stuff in his OBS as a result. <clears throat> I guess we'll see. I agree, Dark Magus says console wars are stupid. Console wars have always been stupid. Listen, competition is fine. But fanboyism and warring between gaming communities is incredibly fucking stupid and always has been. <laughs> you need competition. Competition is healthy. When you have multiple companies vying for the top spot, it's healthy because it makes them want to be better. It makes them have improvements to their consoles, improvements to their game development cycle. Everyone's trying to be the top dog. We want that in the games industry. We don't want one bloated person or company in charge that's always ahead. Because then what happens is you get laziness and complacency like we have with YouTube. There is no video sharing website that comp competes with YouTube. So what happens with YouTube? The site's shit. Worst DMCA fucking system on the internet. Absolute abuse left and right. Ads are fucked up left and right. Demonetization's rampant. People get banned from the site for no fucking reason. They reprogram the site on a daily basis, ruin it for everybody. Then we fix it after the fact. They don't listen. They don't actually admit fault. They're fucked up. Why? Because they're the industry leader and no one can take them down. They're just untouchable. We don't want that in the games industry. We want competition, right? We do. We absolutely want competition. So... DSP, if you really feel that way about YouTube and you feel that strongly about it because you go on this rain all the time, you must feel some type of way about it. Why don't you post your content on any other site? Because it's never been easier to multi-stream. You could stream to a bunch of different sites all at once. Twitch, YouTube, Kick, you could go anywhere. And your VODs could be the exact same way. In fact, Odyssey has a feature where if you have a certain amount of subs, I believe it's a thousand subs, it'll auto-sync your YouTube account. So you actually don't even have to upload anymore. It'll do it automatically. And Uploading to Rumble is just as simple as uploading to YouTube. If you've already uploaded the YouTube video even, you could just copy and paste all of the information onto Rumble. It's the same shit. You want to sit here and talk about how shitty YouTube is and that you want to see competition and you think that they're bad because they don't have it, but yet you don't go out of your way to support the other websites that are trying to compete. You do realize that that's exactly how they compete, right? By you supporting them? By a bunch of individual people supporting them? It just bothers me when people stand on their soapbox or want to get on their high horse about how they want to see change, about how they want there to be active competition, but then they don't go out of their way to support the companies that are trying to be that competition. If you don't like Amazon, you need to be supporting smaller businesses. If you don't like AAA studios because you think they're scumbags and they don't treat their employees right, you need to be playing indie games or games from AA studios. And if you don't like YouTube, you need to be uploading your videos to other sites so people have a reason to go to that site. Try and be the change that you want to see. Actually make the difference DSP you could even be one of those people that watches the content on a competing platform but no you just want to sit here and cry and whine and bitch about it that's all you're good for let's hope that there is competition I don't want to see the downfall of Xbox I'm not a fucking Sony pony you know at the same time I'm not an Xbox either I just want to see I don't feel like right now there is much competition because all the Xbox exclusive games suck let's be honest Halo Infinite was good for two months and then it sucked right Redfall comes out. It sucks. Hi-Fi Rush. It's good, but it's just an indie game. It's not going to stir up that much attention, right? The, the, these exclusives are not enough to make Xbox a huge competitor against PS5. It sucks. We need that. We want to see competition. And we're not having it right now. In this, this generation of consoles, it's very one-sided towards Sony, and that sucks. You want to see more competition so they'll actually work to improve more, and I don't think that's happening. So... Let's see what happens, all right? Let's see what happens next week. All right. Well, if you ask me, DSP, the PlayStation exclusives aren't exactly all that interesting either. So I guess they're kind of in the same boat. But I do think this is kind of a weird rant coming from DSP, given how often he's shilling for Xbox, because he's constantly telling you how awesome Game Pass is and how everybody should have it. And it's the best way to play new games and that Xbox is basically the best thing ever. It's a subject that gets brought up quite often. And that's going to be the end of that clip. But you know me, I'm not going to do a video this short. So this is, of course, going to be a double feature so another shout out to snort hogan for the second clip in this video as always i appreciate it well let me tell you something brother snort 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 hogan drip snort snort i got the drip Go. i have another dollar tip and at this point i'm getting real fed up i really am i'm getting really fed up because 
every day, I'm going to make this abundantly clear, all right? I'm not going to sit here and become like a fucking parent refereeing people on my streams. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to put out content and chill and enjoy games with all of you. And beg, don't forget beg DSP. You're definitely here for that as well. And I know that he didn't say the name yet, but we're talking about DSP's favorite Canadian racer, Canadian Kurt. So DSP getting upset that he doesn't want to have to act like a parent in his own chat and constantly moderate these squabbles is nothing but his own fault because he's had multiple opportunities time after time to get rid of Canadian Kirk because he's just an outright racist. But he refuses to do that because Kirk pays up at the end of the day. So of course we get another Canadian Kirk segment, which I think this makes three in the past couple weeks. You'd think that DSP would learn by now, but he just doesn't. If that's what you're here for, welcome. I hope you're here for happiness and fun and good stuff. I'm seriously not going to sit here and have to referee people being at each other's throats. All right. Oh, this person's doing this and calling me this. And then I got moderated because of this and this and this. And you know what? I don't care anymore. I'm tired of it. I, every day, this is not my job to become a fucking dad to the people in the chat. At some point you gotta realize if, if every single day there's a problem, it's probably because you're part of the problem or else there wouldn't be a problem every single day. You know, I actually agree with that DSP. If you have problems every single day, if you have problems everywhere you go with all of the different people that you meet, it's probably you. You're probably a huge part of the problem. I wish you would just take that idea and apply it to yourself, DSP. If all of these people on the internet have an issue with you, it's probably something that you're doing. It's probably something that you have control of that you just aren't taking care of. I'll never not be astonished by DSP's ability to get so close to self-awareness, so close to self-reflection, and then still so far away because he understands the basic principles he understands how to do it he just doesn't do it but now the chat's had time to catch up you can very clearly see all of the dents in dsp's chat are really not interested that kirk is back and are popping off about it but all of the dense opinions combined matter less to dsp than those couple of dollars that kirk is sending to tattle you know what i'm saying like i don't even know what else to say any further to this obvious there's problems here right like if people just came in the chat and behaved and didn't do things that they knew were going to be considered annoying, bothersome to others, risque, there would be no problems, all right? Why is it that I'm not having these problems with so many other people, right? <laughs> I'm just being honest. Why is it that I'm just not having these problems and only one or two people seem to keep, keep having the same problems, right? I don't get it. I just don't get it. And it's not my job to get it either. It's my job to run a stream do a fun podcast, enjoy games, have fun with you guys, not to police people all fucking day. And I don't want to police people all day. If I did, I'd go be a, a, you know, a disciplined dean at a fucking high school or something, and I'd beat people with rulers all day, and I'd send them to detention. That's not my job. All right, it's not what I, I'm, in, I'm being. It's very strange to me that he picked a disciplined dean at a school so that he could beat students all day rather than a police officer when he specifically used the words police people. It just stuck out to me instantly. I don't know why he would have picked that when he very specifically used the word police. Why did his brain not jump to police officer, you know? I wonder if it's because he understands that most of the people in his chat are literal children so they would understand the reference and he was immediately thinking about school children. And now that I say that out loud, it sounds kind of sus, so we should probably move on. But that comes with the territory when you become a streamer. If you're not willing to have a moderation team that's going to take care of this regularly, then it is your problem. It is something that you have to take care of. Especially when you continue to let known problems fester in your chat. You continue to let these people that continuously are racist, are having issues with other chat members, come back again and again and again for a few bucks. It's a self-created problem that DSP is just using to continue to complain on his level one pre-stream because that's really all the level one pre-stream has ever really been about it's just a place for dsp to yell bitch and complain about shit that he doesn't like in his life but that's his favorite thing to do that's the content he would rather make so he makes problems he lets problems continue to happen so he has more things to complain about my job is to make sure that the content is good and that people are not 
being abusive to each other in the in the chat. That's it. That's where my job ends. You understand? And you failed to do that DSP consistently because Canadian Kirk should have been gone if that was the case. This person has consistently come into your chat and been nothing but problems and you let it persist. You seem to understand that it is kind of your job to make sure that people are not abusing each other in the chat. That's how you phrased it. I can't think of a more abusive thing in a chat than someone just outright being racist, aside from an actual dox, which you've also had happen before. So it kind of sounds to me like you're incapable of doing part of what you consider your job. If you got personal issues with other people in the chat, ignore them. There's even an ignore command that you can ignore someone in the chat and never see what they say. Now, if you're in the chat every day and you're saying similar kinds of stuff and every day you're getting called out for it and every day people are having problems with you, you should maybe take a hint, <laughs> right? I mean, what else am I supposed to say here? I can't really even be a, any nicer than the way that I'm putting it, okay? Once again, DSP, take your own advice, dog. It's not that complicated. You understand the basic principles. You understand the concept. Just apply it to yourself, please. But why are you trying to put this in the nicest way possible for an actual racist? This is not an exaggeration. This is not hyperbole. It is an actual racist in your chat that you were trying to be as kind as possible to. Which is really funny to me because there's been people who have just slightly criticized you that were long-term dense and you absolutely flipped your shit at them and told them apart but kirk gets handled with the lightest touch possible why is that dsp it's just so strange to me listen i'm someone who 15 years ago used to do risque commentary on youtube right now over the last 15 years i've grown and matured and changed as a person and i've realized that that kind of commentary number one is just not funny anymore it's played out it's boring it's so immature to the point where it actually makes me cringe. Sometimes I'm watching back my old playthroughs and I'm like, can't believe I said that stuff, right? But then again, I mean, this was a long time ago. I was younger. I was very much more, I was in that teen mindset, correct? I was. I was in a teenager mindset where I felt like there's no filter for what comes out of my mouth. I'll just say whatever. And people wanted that on YouTube. So you were in a teen mindset in your late 20s and early 30s? That just speaks volumes to your maturity level, DSP. Even to this day, it speaks volumes about where you're at maturity-wise. You really do have the mentality of someone who's 20 years younger than you really are. I guess that explains some of the delusions that you have. It kind of explains some of the aspects to the false reality that you seem to live in. Because I would imagine that if my mentality was aged 20 years in reverse, that my perspective of reality would be altered as well. But culture has changed the world has changed businesses have changed that stuff kind of stuff isn't even allowed on youtube anymore do you understand if i were to just sit here and and say incredibly over the top risque stuff about sexualized comments and racial comments and gender comments and all this shit i'd be banned and so will you you're not immune to it either youtube is a place that has rules you understand and you have to follow the rules. You can't just say, because I feel like being unfiltered, I'm immune to all the rules. You're not. You're not. Everyone has to follow the rules if they want to be here. Me too. So it's either you acknowledge that, you say, okay, I get it, and then you follow them, or you leave. Not come back every day and complain about it. It's one or the other. And that's exactly what the detractors have been saying about you, DSP. You can either follow the rules and quit your bitching, or you can go somewhere else and do something else. There's really no in-between options here. But yet, here we are, day after day, listening to the level 1 pre-stream, and it's nothing but you ranting and raving about a bunch of different things, and very often it is about how much you hate YouTube. It's There's no middle ground here, that's how it is. I hate to say it, this is a situation where it's black and white. Either you have to kind of say, alright, maybe I don't agree with it, but I begrudgingly accept it because I want to be here. I want to be part of this community. <clears throat> I want to be on YouTube and I have to abide by YouTube's rules or you leave YouTube. I made the active decision to change. When I became an interactive streamer in 2017, I said, if I'm going to be here all day, every day on a stream and I see all the writing on the wall and everything around me is changing, I've got to change too. I have to, all right? 
So DSP's transformation, his change into being a better person and not doing these risque jokes, as he calls them, was not spurred on by any sort of maturity on his behalf. It wasn't an active decision that he made because he wanted to be a better person, wanted to be a more entertaining, funny, and accepting person. It was entirely because he seen the writing on the walls and understood that he was going to be in some sort of trouble had he not changed. So as far as I'm concerned, he never actively changed. He didn't become a better person. He simply quit saying the things out out loud that he was thinking and you can still see that in his content today that's why every once in a while the joke will still slip out because his mentality never changed he just holds it back now so i changed and you would think that everyone would have understood that you also have to be un in line with those changes but i guess not i guess some people think that they're above the rules you're not it's everyone together in this boat and you can't have one asshole rocking the boat like this and everyone else is like, what the fuck are you doing? Could you just sit still? No, I want to do this. Well, eventually people are going to say, fuck this and throw you out of the boat. And that's what's happening. Okay? I don't know what else to say. I, it, it's so straightforward what I'm saying, yet it seems like it's falling on deaf ears. I, I just... <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Good lord, man. It really, like, I don't even know what, what, how else I'm supposed to handle this. You're supposed to ban him, DSP. What other options do you have? It's the easiest win in the world and you're still fumbling it. Everybody in chat hates the guy. It's been multiple derail segments about it. Just get him gone. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm not going to allow my entire stream to be derailed by this. So if this topic continues, I'm just going to ignore it. I can't, I don't know what else to say. I can't affect it. I can't help it. I can't fix it. I can't, here's the thing. And this is what I've definitely learned over the years. All you can do in life is you can present the rational argument to someone and you can try to make them understand. Okay. That's all you can do. You can't make people change. You can't. Someone has to have the innate desire to change themselves for the better, right? It doesn't matter how much you try to say, this is good for you, this is better for you, until they get that moment of recognition, self-awareness, they say, oh, yeah, probably this is better for me, right? They're never gonna change. That's why you have people who, who have disorders and they always go back to their addictions because they can't, they have to want to change so much that they then force themselves to. Very strange for him to bring up the word addiction given his experience with the topic. But he is very right. You cannot make people change. They have to want to do it themselves in order to make any progress in it. And that's why I don't think that it'll actually matter whether or not I give DSP genuine advice or give him things that I think would actually help his streams because he's never going to listen. It doesn't matter if the advice is the best advice on the planet. I'm not saying that it is. But even if it was, he wouldn't listen regardless because he's not interested in it, especially if it's coming from a detractor like myself. But notice that DSP didn't say that he was going to ban Kirk. He said if it keeps happening that he's just going to start ignoring it and moving on. He can't do anything about it, dude. He can't just ban somebody for some reason. That thing that he's known for, the lean-in manual ban? Yeah, not for Kirk for some reason. He's not immune to the rules, but DSP can't hit him with the lean-in? Kind of sounds like he's immune to the rules, doesn't it? You can't make someone change by yelling at them. It's never going to happen. So I can only talk about this as much, and this person can tip as much as they want, it ain't gonna help the situation. I can't make them change and abide by rules that everyone else is following. I can't do it. I don't know what else to say. So I'm just not gonna waste time on it. I can't. I'm derailing my stream multiple days now talking about this and it has nothing to do with what we should be talking about on the streams. Okay. I love DSP addressing the fact that he's continuing to let Kirk tip and say everything that he needs to say, even though this situation is pretty much as clear cut as it comes. His greed knows no bounds. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it at this. All right. To Kirk or he hate me or whatever name he's being called today. If you want to contribute and talk positively about the content that's going on on the stream, you're welcome. If you're going to sit here and you're going to complain about moderators, you're going to complain about you can't say what you want to say in the chat. You're going to complain. You're going to complain. You're going to complain. I'm just going to ignore you. Okay. That's that simple. There's a difference between... I'm not going to derail my whole streams talking about this all day long, every day. You, we've had the conversation now multiple times. I've had enough. I don't want to sit here every day talking about this, right? I think you know the deal. you got to abide by the rules like everyone else, all right? Uh, just because you're tipping 
doesn't mean that I'm going to derail my entire stream around this shit. I'm not, okay? So again, you want to contribute and talk about the game, be positive, be a part of the community, that's great. You're welcome. But I'm not going to have you come in here and derail the stream two days in a row. This is now tw two, two, pre two podcasts, right? That's enough. I'm putting my foot down now. I can't, I can't be having this every fucking day, <clears throat> okay? Okay. All right. Um... So, I think that's good. Have we covered everything? I feel like we've covered all the topics, right? <clears throat> yes, Michael says, you're not ignoring him, you're talking. Yeah, because he keeps tipping me. I'm not even kidding. He sent like three more dollar tips, and each one is about, I don't like this moderator, and this and that, and I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not, that's what I mean. Like, I'm not going to talk about this shit. It's a waste of my time, okay? <clears throat> so, for the 500th time in a row, DSP is saying that he's no longer going to be addressing Captain Kirk. He's not going to be answering any of his messages that he tips with and that he's moving on. He can't be derailed anymore. Like I said, this is the 500th time that we've said this, so I guarantee that it's going to happen again inevitably. But he thinks that he's put his foot down and that's going to be the end of the story because he's the almighty powerful DSP. And this is his stream, dude. But that's going to be the end of the video. So, of course, another big ups to Snort Hogan for the clip in this one. As always, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. Shout out to everybody who watched the video, especially if you made it this far. And a special big ups to all of my members. I love all of you guys so much. Thank you. But hopefully I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. But until then, make sure that you check out other detractor channels and dive deeper to that. Snortex. Ah!